I arrived in Altoona on Friday morning of Memorial Day weekend and did not expect the weather to be so winter-like. It was 39 degrees and windy. Downtown Altoona was going about its business and I was going about mine. The famous Alto Tower has been out of service for over a year, but still stands next to the ex-Pennsylvania, ex-Penn Central, ex-Conrail, now Norfolk Southern, Pittsburgh, Maine. Altoona, Pennsylvania is a railroad town in the Allegheny Mountains, but with one grade crossing, so there are virtually no horns. And when you're unfamiliar with all the station names on the timetable, trains can sneak up on the stranger. Alto Tower served on the Pensy for 97 years, taken out of service on June 16, 2012. It was NS's last Pennsylvania switch tower. Eastward, about a half mile, is Altoona's 9th Avenue, known well to rail fans as a close vantage point to the tracks. On this cold Friday morning, I found this contest led by one of NS's MP15Es. These switch engines are XMP15DCs, the Norfolk Southern overhauled and converted right here at Altoona's Juniata shops. In the late afternoon, Liz and I visited the Altoona Railroaders Memorial Museum, which is also right downtown. This museum is a must-see for any rail fan visiting central Pennsylvania. It's three floors of railroad artifacts that tell the story of the Pennsylvania Railroad and Altoona in particular. There's also a section devoted to the Penn Central and Conrail stories. Your $10 admission to the museum is also a ticket to Horseshoe Curve Park. The way up to the curve is either a long walk up a twisting stair or on the funicular. First time I'd ever seen or even heard that word. This conveyance works on counterbalance. Two cars attached by cables. When one car goes down, the other goes up, helped along by an electric motor drive. Cars always reach the passing siding at the same time for a running meet. Cool. The view from the curve is spectacular. There are three reservoirs down the valley that supply water to the city of Altoona. At the business end of the park are the tracks. This is the triple track Pittsburgh main coming out of Altoona and heading to Galitzin, Crescent and Pittsburgh. Horseshoe is famous for the view, but was built for function. The curve was the brainchild of John Edgar Thompson, chief engineer of the new Pennsylvania Railroad in 1847. In a race to get a railroad across Pennsylvania to the commerce-rich Pittsburgh area, Thompson decided to take the Pensy right through the Alleghenies with a series of tunnels, cuts, and curves. The most famous of those is Horseshoe Curve, opened in 1854. The curve allows the railroad to gently rise 122 feet along the edges of Catanning Point instead of a costly and prohibitively steep bridge across the valley. 
Built as part of the Pennsylvania, it continued service through the Penn Central nightmare and the Conrail rebuilding years. And now for Norfolk Southern, Horseshoe Curve still serves the railroad. Even though trees have obscured much of the view, Horseshoe Curve remains a great rail fanning vantage point. And almost as much as the spectacle of the curve, this Flatlander rail fan was impressed by helper engines. From Altoona below to the summit of the Alleghenies at Crescent, trains need a push to get over these mountains. NS stages its helper engines at Crescent, ready to help trains coming from either side of the mountain. We rail fans got a front row seat to a helper incident when this westbound intermodal lost one of its engines. In less than 10 minutes, a helper set came out of Altoona and was ready to push the stalled train over the mountain. Helpers on this district are primarily SD40Es, rebuilt from Norfolk Southern's SD50s, right down the hill at Altoona's engine shops. While we were all watching the helper show, Amtrak's Pennsylvanian came up from behind and stopped. For some reason, he wasn't going around the stall train, even though the line is triple track here. Helpers shoved the piggyback train over the hill, and Amtrak went on its way toward Pittsburgh. This would be enough Pennsylvania rail fanning for me this Friday. The temperature was dropping and the wind was picking up. Next morning, I'm up early and out to Galitzin. Other rail fans were already arriving to stake out their spots for the big event. Galitzin is several miles west and uphill from Altoona and the location of three tunnels. The center bore, known as the Allegheny Tunnel, passes right under the town. The southern tunnel, about a quarter mile away, is the new Portage Tunnel. The northern bore, known as the Galitzin Tunnel, was closed after 1995 when the center tunnel was double tracked and expanded for double stack service. Still getting used to no horn blowing and sparse radio traffic, the Norfolk Southern trains were still sneaking up on me this morning. Despite temperatures in the low 40s and a 25 mile an hour wind, rail fans were not put off from seeing this spectacle this morning. I was one of the first there. Then a few more showed up, then a few more, then a lot more. Everyone staking out his piece of real estate in hopes of getting the perfect shot. Then at 11 a.m. sharp, the big moment arrives. My first ever time seeing big mainline steam in operation. The train was coming to Galitzin to turn back to Altoona on a connection track here that forms a Y. He'll go back through the new Portage Tunnel just to our south. I broke off early and drove as fast as I could legally go back down the hill to Altoona. Just outside of town at the 24 and a half street overpass, more crowds were gathered. I picked a spot down below thinking I was being crafty, 
but a whole bunch of folks had the same thought way ahead of me. Our first catch was a crude oil train coming up out of Altoona. My first catch of one of these, too. The Interstate 8105 Heritage engine was a bonus. Just after noon, the excursion train arrived for its lunchtime break at Altoona. In addition to the locomotives, this train is a pretty impressive collection of passenger rolling stock with contributions from Norfolk Southern, Mid-America, and other private car operators. This whole event was one of a series of weekend excursions sponsored by the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society and the Norfolk Southern Railroad. By two o'clock, it was almost warm enough to remove your jacket, but I didn't. Gathering at Ninth Avenue, the throngs again waited for the big show. The pedestrian walkway above and the Amtrak station below were packed, so that wasn't an option for me. Actually, the crowd at the platform were mostly passengers waiting to reboard the train after taking a lunch break at the railroad museum. At last, the NKP 765 backed its train from its servicing at the Pennsylvania Railroad engine shops, cleverly named Shops. I couldn't help feeling that we rail fans on the ground had the better show, and it was free. Having never been in a steam excursion gaggle of rail fans before, I half expected there to be a little discourtesy and inconsideration, but there was none. All rail fans near me all morning carefully staked out their photo spots and courteously asked others if they were okay and out of their shop. All except for this guy. Seriously? I don't think he was a rail fan. Oh well. While I waited for a fist fight to break out next to me, I got a few more shots of the 765. Ah. Come slow down. We hung for a few more minutes, but I wanted to get this thing highballing on the main line. So we beat it north to a spot called Pinecroft. And I sent KP765, track one east, clear to 30 out. We were only there for a minute when here he came. This is the sound I wanted to hear this weekend.
on the Pennsylvania Railroad near Altoona with thanks to the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society and the Norfolk Southern. This is Danny Harmon, out.